Shri Tripura Rahasyam Mahatmya Khandam Aum Shri Ganesha Sharada Guru Bhyo Namaha Namaste So, in the last episode, Parsharam revealed his desire is to become desireless. So this is the path to peace. This is the way to enlightenment, to let go of desire. Uh, we already talked about wishless contemplation in the Buddha's teaching. And now here we see the same thing in the Sri Vidya, which is that to become peaceful, to become free from suffering, one must become desireless. Parashuram expressed his regret at being entangled in desire and anger. But this is what happens. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, from lust, anger develops. Why? Because we can never satisfy lust. Lust always wants more and more. And it also degrades us because by saying we want more and more, it means we are less and less. <laughs> we are incomplete. But that's not true. Actually, every one of us at the root is Brahman. And then the purpose of sadhana, the purpose of Shastra, the purpose of the guru is to awaken us to this. So, after Parashuram expressed his desire to his guru, then Dattatreya replied. Hearing his words, the great sage Dattatreya uttered auspicious words that pleased Parashuram. O oh, Rama, listen carefully to my words. The good desire that has been expressed by you who are pure is the root of auspiciousness. Truly, you have gathered the grace of the Devi. Your good deeds of many past births have borne fruit. This type of grace is never acquired by small deeds. The fruits of your good deeds in the past are really supreme. So we've been saying this again and again, <laughs> that before you can make really any progress in spiritual life, you have to have a foundation in karma yoga and bhakti yoga. You have to perform good deeds. Huh? Action in the mode of goodness is defined as that which leads toward liberation. Action in the mode of passion leads to rebirth in the human form. And action in the mode of ignorance leads to rebirth in the animal kingdom. This is well known in Vedas. But people don't follow it. People don't take it seriously. They just play, they dabble with sadhana. They don't make a firm commitment. Huh? And they mix their, their activities. Huh? Goodness, passion, and ignorance all at the same time. It's like kitchery, huh? Like mulligan stew. Everything but the kitchen sink thrown in. But how can you make progress like this? So we recommend that you do karma yoga. I'm still doing karma yoga even after realization. I'm doing these videos, which spreads good vibes and knowledge all over the planet and I'm getting very good results. And I also do bhakti yoga. I worship the goddess every day, every morning and night. So in this way, I am assured of a flow of good karma to support my meditation. I don't suffer from bad dreams. I don't have any problems. I don't have any worries. Everything is good. So this is ascertained by good deeds, and in the following lifetime, one gets the result. O oh, Rama, listen to me with oneness of mind. 
Your desire is most comforting. It cannot be realized any time without wisdom. Truly, Parashiva is the self of all creatures. The individual soul under the influence of Maya does not understand the Supreme. It remains small due to the shrinking of all powers. This is the truth here. Nothing else shines other than the shining self. Nothing else even exists. Self-luminance is what is seen as self. There is no difference between them. The power of the self is really the illumination. So the self is self-luminous and he illuminates everything. Parashiva, also known as Nirguna Brahman, is the source of all. It's the only thing that really exists. Everything else is Maya. <laughs> Everything else is Shakti. Shiva and Shakti. Nirguna Brahman and Saguna Brahman. So this is what we should know when we're in meditation. That when we're in right meditation, when we're in good meditation and contemplation, then everything is revealed by self-luminance, by self-effulgence. The self is that which illuminates everything. And we are that self. This thought or this uh, point of view is very much confirmed by Ramana Maharshi. The object here is the universal being consciousness bliss, which is all pervading and therefore imminent in all. It need not be cognized by reflection alone. It is self resplendent. Therefore, the seeker's aim must be to drain away the vasanas from the heart and let no reflection obstruct the light of eternal consciousness. This is achieved by the search for the origin of the ego and by diving into the heart. This is the direct method of self-realization. One who adopts it need not worry about nadis, the brain, the sushumna, the paranadi, the kundalini, paranayama, or the six chakras. The self does not come from anywhere else and enter the body through the crown of the head. It is as it is, ever sparkling, ever steady, unmoving, and unchanging. The changes which are noticed are not inherent in the self, which abides in the heart and is self-luminous like the sun. The changes are seen in its light. What a wonderful, <laughs> what a magnificent revelation of the reality, the actuality, uh, the ever-present, ever-existing self, Brahman, that which illuminates everything else. Even though the changes, the temporary comings and goings of objects are actually illusion. Without the presence of the self, we would not even be aware of them. So then some people ask, how can I see the self? <laughs> the self is not visible in its reflections in the changing phenomena of the world. It is only by being the self that you can know the self. You cannot see the self directly because you are the self. Just like the eye cannot see itself, so the self cannot see itself because it is the seer. Uh, we have one series, Drig Drishya Vivekaha, which means discrimination between the seer and the seen. So we are the seers. And anything that is seen is not self, is the other, is the object. But the self is ourselves. <laughs> 
the subject, the conscious being, knowledge, wisdom, huh? prakash, direct perception of the truth. In North India, there's a common name, Aum Prakash. <laughs> this means that Aum is directly visible in the illumination of the phenomena which are perceived. So, anyone can realize this self by the direct method. The direct method is to analyze the source of the ego. If you chant a mantra, where is the mantra coming from? I chant the Maha Shodashi mantra. We give details on it here. And this mantra is so powerful that even when I am in tremendous light of deep meditation, still the mantra is there with me. Mother is there everywhere. So that's why this Sri Vidya is the, the treasure trove, the mother load, <laughs> the great mine from which all jewels can be extracted. And that's why when Parashuram, who is himself an incarnation of Vishnu, when he approaches Dattatreya, a combination incarnation of Vishnu, Shiva, and Ganesh, then he tells instructions on the Sri Vidya, because the Sri Vidya is the highest path, or I should say, the path that covers everything, all four stages of consciousness, leading to ultimate perfection in self-realization. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. <laughs>